Hi parents, today I want to talk a little bit about what it means to build number sense with primary school students, kindergarten, preschool, first grade students. These are the foundational years for these kids. These are the times when we really want to make sure that they understand values of numbers. And so let's talk a little bit about how that happens. There are stages kids go through to help develop a sense of number. For example, they start by just counting random numbers and then they learn to count in order. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then they start to be able to apply that understanding of counting the numbers that they know to actually counting objects. So that's when they start to point at objects like these objects in my hand. And they will say things like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they will say the numbers in order, but they won't necessarily tag one item for every number. They don't have what we call one-to-one -one correspondence yet. After they start to develop that understanding of every time I say a number, I touch an object or I point to an object, then they start to develop that understanding of one-to-one -one correspondence. That's when they will say one, two, three, four, five, once they have that, we can really start to do some things with understanding values of numbers. Once students have one-to-one -one correspondence and can count in order, they'll start to count objects like this. One, two, three, four, five. But really young children, or when they're still developing an understanding of number sense, they'll say that you can ask a child something like this, show me four and they'll count one, two, three, four, and point to the fourth one. Because at that point, they understand something about numbers. They understand they come in order. They understand one-to-one -one correspondence with tagging. But they don't necessarily put value to a number. So when they point to the, this one here, they're saying that's four, meaning the fourth one. When we know that the actual number four has a value, so four really is all of these. Once they start to be able to see four as all of these, they, then they see numbers nested within that. So in other words, four is made up of three and one, or it's made up of two and two, or it's made up of one and three, or it's made up of four and no more, four and zero. So that's when they start to really understand that numbers have a value tagged to them. Once students have an understanding that number is a value, then we can start to help them understand how numbers can be the same even though they may look different. For example, I have two in this hand and I have two in this hand. Does that still make four? Well, young children might need to actually count that one, two, three, four, or put them together and make sure that the total is still four. One, two, Three, four. So we want to help them start to see how you can, what we call in math, compose or decompose numbers. So we can play games like this. I'm going to put four in my hand. We're going to count it and make sure it's four. And then I'm going to put my hand behind my back and I'm going to put some in one hand and some in the other hand. Show me what you have in one hand. So in this hand I have three. How many do I have in this hand? Remember, we started with four. Some kids, we actually need to open their hand and see that and count it. One, two, three, and one more makes four. And then after a while, they might just say, oh, that's just one more. Three and one makes the four. And so we want them to start to be able to understand that idea that I can change the amount in each hand and I still have a total of four. At that point, we can start changing those numbers around and see how we can explore different ways to decompose a number that we want to work on for the day. So we worked on four, we work on six, we work on eight. So right now I have 10. I have 10 dice in my hand. And you can use anything, 10 counters, 10 dice, 10 pennies, whatever you have available at home. So at this point, I have 10 in my hand. I'm going to put some in one hand and some in the other hand. I'm going to show you one hand and I want you to guess what I have in my other hand. So I have one, two, three, four, five in this hand. How many do you think I'm hiding in this hand? And the students or your children will start to say, oh, well, I know that five and five make 10, so 
Uh, you must be hiding five. I could have six and four, and I still have 10. I can have seven and three, and I still have 10. I can have eight and two, and I still have 10. Another great way to play this game would, buy, would be using a simple paper cup or a glass or something that they can't see through. Um, so, for example, I'm working on the number six with a student or a child, and I say I have six all together, and they might want to count the six and, you know, ensure that you do have six, and I'm going to put some on top and some underneath. So in this example, I actually put one, two, three, four, five on top. Remember, we had six all together. If I have five on top, how many am I hiding under my cup? And kids might do things like count on. Well, if you have five here, one more makes six. Or I might have four on top and the rest on the bottom. And they might do the same thing. They might count one, two, three, four. How many are still underneath five, six? So counting on is a strategy we can encourage. And of course, kids can check by lifting the cup and see how they did. Once students get really good at this game and can start to think about putting numbers together and taking them apart in different ways, we can have them represent them on paper. So kindergarten and first grade, even preschool kids can do this. Start to draw the cup in some shape. It could be a circle, it could be a cup shape. And say, well, draw the amount that I had on top and draw the amount that I had underneath that you couldn't see. So here I drew four on top and two on the bottom. Once they start to understand how to write their numerals well, then we can move them into um, using a symbol for the numbers by writing the numerals themselves. So we can write numeral four on top and numeral two underneath, four and two make the six. You can see how that makes a nice transition into the standard way that students might write an equation um, in a vertical form, four plus two equals six. And that's a piece that we would want to show them. This is how a mathematician would write that. Four plus two makes six. Four plus two makes six. Helping them understand that the addition sign means to add or put together sets and that this line represents what the total is or what goes, what is on the bottom is equal to what's on the top. We really want to build that understanding of the equal sign as being equivalence, balanced on both sides, in this case on top and on bottom. And of course we can do the same thing with the hand game that we talked about a few minutes ago. We can practice until the kids are really good at deciding how many is in each hand. And then we can start to move them towards representing what they've done with their hands by having them draw. So I drew four in this hand and two in this hand. And then moving them into using symbols for that, numeral four and numeral two, four and two more, make six all together. And then finally into that symbolic form that we're all used to, the typical equation, four plus two, equals six, helping them understand that equal sign means that they're balanced on both sides, that both sides have the same value or the same amount. Four and two on this side and six on this side are the same thing. And so we can start to help make that transition from the concrete or the real materials to a representation of that by drawing or representing on paper, and then finally moving them into how do we write that as a mathematician? How is that written in standard form? The great thing about games like these are that we can start with very small numbers for our preschool or kindergarten students when they're first starting out, and then we can build on that. We can play the same games with our first and even into second grade kid, um, students who need work on building that understanding through 10, through 12, through 15, through 20. Um, most of the standards uh, will ask students by the end of second grade to be fluent with their facts, their facts or their understanding of numbers and how they can be put together and taken apart up through 20. So by the end of second grade, we want kids to be able to say that I know 12 and eight make 20, just like I know 15 and five make 20, just like I know 10 and 10 make 20. And then I know that if I have 20 and I subtract 10, that I have 10 left. So we want them to see that um, how that all fits together, how addition and subtraction are inverse operations, that if you can subtract 
you can you can use addition to help you subtract and you can use subtraction to help you with addition that they are that they interchange with each other another example of ways that we can help kids uh, represent with numerals or starting with drawings and then moving into numerals would be with something we call number bonds so in this example we start with our total is six and we can break six up into four and two or we could break it up into three and three, or we could break it up into five and one. And the kids start to represent all the ways that they can make six, all the ways they can make eight, all the ways they can make 12 and so on. So number bonds are a really nice way for kids to start to think about what are all the ways I can decompose this number and represent those ways on paper. When students get really strong at those foundational skills of being able to count well, to be able to compose and decompose numbers well, um, to become very fluent with that in meaningful and fun ways, it really makes a difference when they get into those larger numbers as they go through elementary school. So here, for example, I don't know if you can see that, we've got the problem 47 plus 56. Well, of course, the traditional algorithm, the the traditional way that we all learned was to start with our ones place seven and six makes the 13. We want them just to know that because in order to know that they have to be able to understand that 13 can be unpacked into 10 and three and that's why we're carrying that 10 over here. We can talk about that in another video but helping kids to have those foundational skills right from the get-go will make a really big difference and one of the ways you can help them them in preschool and kindergarten and first grade is making sure that they are very strong with their understanding of numbers first through five, then through 10, and then through 20. Thanks for coming by today, and I hope to see you soon.